Kenya's opposition leader Raila Odinga wants changes to his country's electoral commission before he can take part in the rerun vote called by the Supreme Court. Odinga told supporters that his coalition would only go to election when they are sure the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission will not take a side. President Uhuru Kenyatta insists the poll should be rerun with the current electoral board while the opposition wants the board dismissed. We have said that you cannot force Kenyans to go to the polls that is being supervised by thieves. We will not accept. We cannot put our goats in a cackle of hyenas. A hyena cannot shepherd goats and they, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, cannot protect our votes. We will only go to the elections when we are sure that the ones organizing the elections are people who will not take sides. Strong words coming from Raila Odinga there, the opposition uh, leader who lost in the Kenyan election. Uh, but it looks like he might just turn out to be the winner if he has his way. Now, joining us is senior researcher, uh, TVC News, Cyril Abaku. Good morning and thanks for joining us, as always, to talk morning, about Kenya. Sir. Yes, thank you, Ngozan. Uh, yeah. This uh, de uh, decision by the Supreme Court, well, it's, it's out there. It's no longer news that the Supreme Court has overturned mm. the Uhuru Kenyatta's um, uh, election result. Now, is, is uh, Raila Odinga asking for too much when he says he will not be part of this election, the rerun, if something is not done about the IEBC? I think he knows better than to make that call. Uh, Odinga is a political veteran and he understands um, the advantage or the benefits that come with sounding populists. Mm. But if we look at the Kenyan constitution itself, I think Article 1, 143 of the, of the 2010 constitution, which he also uh, personally um, oversaw its emergence as prime minister in 2010, stipulates that for changes to be made to the body, yeah, to the IEBC, mm. you know, it has to be either by death, by resignation, or by setting up a tribunal, which is going to uh, go through Parliament first of all. Because as it is now, President Kenyatta is an is what they call in Kenyan terms temporary incumbent president. That is, he's, he's under temporary incumbency. He cannot even hire or fire ministers. There, 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 there's a lot he cannot do mm -hmm. because he is not, as it were, a full-fledged president. <laughs> there's right. a lot that that's taken away from him. Between when the first vote takes place and when whoever won that vote is sworn in, the, the, act, the, the incumbent president is, ten, is under temporary incumbency. So he does not exercise full powers to make those sweeping changes, one. Number two is the fact that the court ruling that mandated Kenyans to go back to the polls said that the IEBC should conduct the elections. Mm -hmm. Now, the IEBC itself has said that they are going to, within 21 days from when the judgment was given, uh, the Supreme Court was going to make or is going to release the fuller judgment so that the IEBC will now know where exactly it aired. It, it, it aired. And then the, for the Commission to have also come out to pledge that they are going to make changes to its personnel to ensure integrity. I think we should let um, the matter take an organic cause instead of making this populist, you know, this sort of. Mm. Of course, I, I, I know well, Dinga, he knows how to catch on to these things. Exactly, to make, yeah. but would you blame him really? Because uh, recall when we were talking about this uh, preparation for the election and then during the election and afterwards the reaction and then now he was talking and complaining and then we thought it was just the rambling of a man that <laughs> thought he was go still going to win the fourth mm -hmm. time around. So him saying all of this and of course uh, there are people there, even the Deputy Finance uh, Minister was saying that Raila Ndiga shouldn't celebrate yet. Uh, many analysts have said it in Kenya as well, that unless people in the IEBC are changed, that the same thing would happen. Well, I think that the IEBC itself has a moral obligation to Kenyans and to the whole world because the judgment of the Kenyan Supreme Court has put Kenya in the rank of countries like Ukraine, Austria, and the Maldives. We are, oh. to date, we, we are, you know, um, to date, we can only say that that is where the, the judgments like this have, have obtained Presidential yeah, elections is the first on, on the on the, on continent. the African continent. The yeah. burden of proof, the burden of this disgrace, on the one hand, and um, victory for the institutions on the other hand, lies squarely on the on, on the IEBC. The judgment didn't fall ju the, the, the the Jubilee Coalition. Mm. When the Supreme Court said, "Hey, you come, commission, uh, commission, allow the opposition party officials to." access of servers and inspect and see how this thing turned out. Mm -hmm. The IEBC turned it down. That mm -hmm. was why the court said, okay, since you won't let that happen, go back and conduct fresh elections. Mm -hmm. The fact is that there were 
as, as Odinga rightly pointed out, the election was won by Kenyatta digitally. But Odinga said they defeated them manually. You know why? Because up until as I speak with you, there are some forms, some manual forms, that the IBS was supposed to have scanned and put online, that they've not scanned and put online. And that's where the problem that's is. That's the problem. So <laughs> Africa is really not ready for electron, um, electronic voting? Is that what we're saying? Well, I, 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 I think we are. I think we are. It's just that, you know, the Kenyan example may mm. not be the best example, but I think we are. Because, I mean, if you look at um, the failure rate of the, of, the, of the voter machines in yes. 2013 mm -hmm. and what it has become in, in 2017, um, 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 there's been a marked difference. But I think that that difference ought to count. In Nigeria, too, we had cases where the voter machines were brought on, uh, on board, they worked in a place and they didn't work in other places. I think to with manage. time, with mm. repeated use, might just get us there. You wouldn't have thought of this, that in, that in 2017 even, a Supreme Court Oops. can have... Uh, so, <laughs> I think it's a journey. The Africa, fact that Africa has come a long way democratically. Of course, of course. Right, so, should uh, the Kenyan people now uh, adopt, uh, for clarity now, and of course for transparency, for justice, a rerun mm -hmm. election, adopt uh, option A4, open ballot system, mm -hmm. and abandon the electoral system so that everyone knows, okay, this is the long line behind this candidate, and this is the short one behind this one. Anything for transparency. Because what? it seems if they do not get it right this time around, Odinga, that has been talking for a while, we know what happened in the past. Um, we pray not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's quite um, um, a delicate... I, 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 I personally wouldn't say that um, because the machines malfunction or didn't function as much as they should or that the process it, itself was manipulated. We should leave the process and go back to where we were 10, 20, 40 years ago. I think that with... The way global evolution, I, I mean, with, with the way technology is evolving and the way mm. people are, are moving, Kenya is a highly digital country. Mm. What I think we should do is to seek to fix those areas that had issues. I noticed that because of failures in one or two places, we Recall should how do Gambia, a way... Gambia conducted its own election and it was quite uh, transparent. Mm -hmm. Of course it was transparent. But, the very uh, local. but yeah, 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 yes, but the Gambia, but you, you cannot compare Gambia's digital compliance with, with, mm. with, with that of Kenya. And in any case, we, we can't say that because they didn't apply digital methods that, that, that it would have been a failure if they are done. Now, this what election, this election, uh, Cyril, because we, we hardly have much time, was uh, dubbed free and fair in spite of the irregularities. And it's the international observers, international press that came up with this in spite of saying that the irregularities were actually insignificant. I wonder what we should make of this. Are they the, becoming, uh, should we trust the, the, the observations the, of the observers? I, yes, I, I, I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. I think the, the excuse that they are giving now is that they gave credibility to the polls, not the counting, not the outcome. Mm. Okay. That's a very smart way of saying, look, you know, but <laughs> because like Rano Dinger uh, pointed out, he said, to put credibility on the back seat mm. and put stability ahead of credibility does not help the democratic process, particularly in Kenya's own example. Mm. But I think that, by and large, I personally feel that the international community had its own stake in the process. Mm. And this is not to sound unfair to them, but I think that they had their own stake in the process. Uh, let's go back to the polls in, within 60 well, days yes, and let's ensure that, that, yes, those particular right. areas and specific issues that we have raised are taken care of. Kenyans should have a second chance at deciding who should right. become the president uh, in the next five years. Thank you very much for okay. your analysis. Our senior researcher, Officer Cyril Abaku, thank you as usual. My pleasure.